Hey folks, welcome back to Fly. We're going to tie today is our Arctic Frog. This is an articulated topwater frog pattern, and this thing is a blast to fish. The hook I have in the vise is just a Mustad stinger hook in a one aught. You can use any stinger hook for this. Um, one aught is about the size we generally always use. I'm not going to tie this one weedless, but this would be the the hook that would need a weed guard if you want to do that. You can just put a monofilament weed guard on here if you wish. I'm not going to do that today for time's sake, but depending on what you're fishing this in, you might want a weed guard. So I'm going to use some pretty heavy thread here. I'm using a 3 aught uni thread in olive. And I'm just going to dress this hook back from the front to the rear. Get a nice little thread base on there. Coming back to about the start of the bend. Trim out that excess thread. The first thing we're going to do here is just put in a dubbing ball. Uh, the dubbing that you use here doesn't really matter too much. Um, just use something that kind of matches your pattern, but we just need a ball here, so use whatever cheap dubbing you have quite a bit of. I'm just using some peacock colored uh, nymph dub. I'm just going to put a nice ball right here at the rear, and this is going to be to help spread our legs out a little bit. Keep things from getting so jumbled up here at the rear of the fly. Now I'm going to come in with eight strands of rubber legs. I like to use different colors on mine, so I've got some greens, whites, yellows, some bards, uh, quite a few different color combinations in my legs. And I'm just going to get a couple lashes over those. Tie them in on my side first, and then double the other strand over and tie it in on the opposite side. Lash all that down nice and tight. Make sure they're where they need to be. And that dubbing ball just helps keep them splayed a little bit. Keeps them from being so jumbled up on top of each other when it's in the water. Now I'm going to tie in a pretty heavy white hackle feather here. This is just to dress the hook a little bit. It's not going to be really visible. So size doesn't matter too much. And it may take two feathers to do this. Just get that tied in and advance my thread up. And again, we're not really going for anything neat and tidy here. So you can just do nice open wraps down the hook shank. Looks like I'll only need this one. Take that up, leave yourself about an eye length or so to tie in some more materials. Capture that feather and tie it off. Get that cleaned up. Get that tip out of there. There we go. Now, up on the top here, I'm going to tie in a single plume of marabou. About the same length as the hook, a little longer maybe. Get that wrapped in right up at the top. Trim out that excess. Clean up. Now, I'm going to invert my hook and do the same thing on the bottom. I'm using another plume of olive. You can use a different color down here on the bottom if you want. You can use white if you want to give it kind of that white underbelly because this is the main body of our frog. So use whatever color combinations you want. I'm just going to stick to all olive with this one. Get that tied down. Alright, now we're going to come in with a pretty big slop and feather. We're going to tie that slop and feather right up here at the front. Get it lashed in. And just get a couple turns in here. This just helps to clean things up a little bit. Just kind of preen those fibers back as you wrap them in. Capture that feather right up at the front, tie it down, clean up. There we go. 
Now we're done with this part, so we're going to go ahead and whip finish. There we go. And now we'll be setting this aside, so this is a good time to go ahead and get some head cement on there. On your thread wraps. And any cleanup you need to do. You can go ahead and do that. I got a couple trapped fibers there. Just get those out. There we go. Now we'll just set that off to the side. Now the front hook up here can be any old expendable hook. Um, I'm just using a big bait holder hook because this is going to be clipped off. All we need is the shank. So you can use a shank or whatever you want. This is just a good cheap way of doing so. So that's why I'm using this guy. I'm going to go ahead and start up at the front with the same thread we were using earlier. Lay down a nice little thread base. And you want to use a shank longer than what your actual head is going to be. Because you need some space off the rear. So you can see I'm not wrapping all the way down this. I'm coming actually up ahead of the barb. Leaving myself some space back there. But we're going to do some gluing, so you do want to lay down a nice thread base. Give it something to adhere to. Alright, so the first thing we're going to tie in here is a piece of, I'm using beadalon wire. You can also use spider wire or power pro, whatever articulation material you like to use. We're just going to tie that off the rear like you would for any normal articulated streamer. So I'm going to double that back, get a nice wrap over it, make sure it's really cinched down doesn't have to be super cinched because this is going to have a lot of glue on it and everything binding it together. So you don't have to go too extreme with your wraps. Now that section that we tied in earlier, we're going to place it onto our wire and get it tied in. No need for beads or anything like that on this. Just leave yourself a nice loop here at the rear for that to be able to move around. Get it tied in. Clip that into my material clip to get it out of my way. Trim off some of the excess on that wire. Get it tied in. Now here at the rear, we're going to tie in another flopping feather. And we want to get quite a few wraps in with this feather, but we really only want it here at the rear. We're not going to take this up the body. We're just tying it in here at the rear of the fly. So just advance it up just enough that you're not trapping a bunch of fibers. Really preen those fibers back as you wrap that feather. Once I oop, lost it, still got it. Get a thread wrap over that. And if at all possible, I like to get a couple thread wraps through it. Really helps strengthen it. And then we'll just kind of bundle everything up, get it palmered back, get a few wraps over it. Alright, now we're going to advance our thread up to the front just to get it away and get it far enough up that we can whip finish. Just a couple turns because again this is all going to be locked up with glue. The foam, what I've done is I've taken three pieces of 2 mil craft foam, super glued those together into a sheet, and then trimmed it down so that it's about a half inch wide or so. Then I doubled it over and put a hole in the center. Okay that hole is going to slide up onto the hook. We're going to take it all the way down to where that schloppen feather ends and fold it forward. What I like to do here is pinch it tight and the hook will actually leave an indentation in the foam which will give you a good idea of where to trim it. We want it to end just behind the hook eye. So look on that indentation and see where the hook eye is. 
trim it off there and then when you put it back on and fold it down the hook eye should be sticking out just like so okay now we'll just leave that hanging out right there we're going to go to our super glue now to do this what I like to use is a q-tip to actually apply it and we also have some rubber legs that we're going to put in here so the rubber legs are going to go right here at the end of the foam okay what I like to do is come in with a small hair clip these are very handy if you're a streamer pack, streamer tire I'll put those in roughly in the center fold them all back and then clamp them down back there with that hair clip that'll keep them in place so that you're not having to fiddle with them all the time so with this super glue again I like to use a q-tip I'll go ahead and get this pretty much folded to where I want it and then load everything up with a bunch of super glue and I'm going to try to keep that super glue off of those legs as much as possible because a lot of legs just don't get along with super glue it'll eat right through them so try to keep your super glue up ahead of those now just fold everything forward and pinch it together try to get things as evened up as you can just hold it there for a second it will not take it long at all to set up there we go it's already already dry locked into place okay now that that's all dry and set we can remove that clip and these front legs I like to just pull them straight down and I'll trim them to where they're all even I'll just kind of get the max amount of length out of them that I can but I'll just trim them even let those stick off the side just like that so the last step and this is totally up to you whether or not you want to do it I tend to I'll kind of come in with a nice sharp pair of scissors and just round off some of the harsh corners just get things rounded down a little bit make things a little more streamlined and not so hard edged and you can also come in with a lighter and just tap it to most of the corners and it'll round it right over and by tap it I mean tap it don't hold it on there or it will really scorch and melt that foam but I'll just soften up a lot of the hard edges just give it a little bit of a rounder shape Alright, and the last step is, of course, you can't have a frog without eyes. So I'm just going to super glue on some eyes. Using that Q-tip again as an applicator. Try to get these lined up halfway. and that bond you get between that foam and that plastic is good those eyes will really stay on there now of course you can use any eyes on this that you want you can use you know 3d eyes or anything like that uh, if you like the look of that me personally I sacrifice the cool looks which capture the fishermen in favor of the attributes of these eyes you can hear that hopefully you can these eyes actually rattle not only do they rattle they move you can hear that rattle you're putting movement and noise into your pattern I'll take that over eyes that look nice any day you'll see this on my streamer patterns even I like to use doll eyes because of those two attributes you're adding rattle and movement yeah they don't look as cool as a 3d eye but I don't care I want to catch fish and I think that that helps all right everybody I got that front hook cut out of there so now it's just got the hook in the rear again you can really easily make this thing weedless if you want to just throw a mono weed guard on there or you can even tie it on a weedless hook but 
You can see full movement here in the rear. It's got a lot of bulk to it. It's nothing but marabou, schloppen, hackle feather, and some rubber legs. So, in the water, this stuff really sp splays out. has a lot of body to it and a lot of movement to it. And the way it's tied, this piece of foam really gets pulled down slightly in the water column. So it sets like this in the water. All this is down below the surface. The only thing floating is this head. So you get a lot of water under there. And then when you pull it, it creates a big disturbance and sinks back down. But it's designed to be nice, big, and bulky, but castable. You can cast this thing quite easily. Works like a charm. The color combinations are endless. You can tie this in gray patterns as a mouse. We've done that before as well. Just use gray up here on the front. Use some natural materials in the body, rabbit strips and things like that. And you've got an instant mouse. Great pattern. Don't think you'll regret having these in your box. And like I said, they are a blast to fish. So much fun catching largies off this pattern. So... Tie some up. Let us know what you think. Please like and subscribe. Please leave us comments. We'd love to hear from you. Tight lines.